Det skal der jo snart give Welcome goblins, ghouls, and werewolves galore. We have a special episode of Socratic Cinema in store. Hey there, guys. Bars. Bars. Yo. I I unfortunately (laughs) didn't go as as a rapper for Halloween, but I think I could have. Like a Transylvania rapper. I I think it would have fit me pretty well, but... Welcome, everyone, to an incredibly special episode of the Socratic Cinema Podcast, Halloween edition. Very spooky indeed. Today, we're talking about Scream. And before we go any further, let's introduce ourselves. My name is Charlie Heatherly. My name is James Delisio. Never mind that it's November 6th. Ooh, Ooh, don't. Don't think about that. It's Halloween right now. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm Casey Clark. I'm here for the ride. (laughs) We'll talk Ka- like this. I don't know what day it is anyway. Ka- yeah, vibe. We're- Ooh. <laughs> Ka- Maybe are you coming for the ride? Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Meet me at our spot. Oh, I don't my- know the rest of the lines. I, no, we uh, can't. Uh, we can't uh. keep doing this. We can't. <laughs> we absolutely cannot keep doing this. It's Halloween. It is. It is Halloween. We're recording this on Halloween Day, so we promise it's incredibly festive. Halloween uh, night. Well, well, uh, I was about to curse you out for a second because that was so pedantic and rude of um, you, James. <laughs> um, actually, <laughs> it's Halloween night. <laughs> well, technically, night starts at seven o'clock. Like, Wait, what are you doing? Oh gosh, no, but but daylight savings does start in in a couple days. But I think it's the good one, so so we're chilling. I'm pretty sure it is the good one. But before we talk about the wonderful movie, or at least I think it's pretty good, the wonderful movie that is Scream, James, do you have some some patrons to thank? I do. For those of you who don't know, a patron is someone who has deemed us worthy of getting a couple bucks a month. Um, Patreon is a service that allows you to support your favorite creators directly rather than working through the corporate conglomerates like YouTube and sponsorships and all that mess and it just you know it puts the support directly to the creators Uh, patreon enables us to up our production values and bring on more people to the socratic team and and watch hot new movies so you guys can get hot new episodes um and so this month and every month we like to thank our patrons who make it all possible so this month i would like to thank john delicio Rachel Delicio, Lisa Delicio, Samuel Copeland, Ethan Rudder, Jeanette Clark, Heather and Michael Clark. There's the Clarks done. Mariah mm-hmm. Helm, Peter Delicio, Hero, and Roger Anderson, last but not least. Thank mm-hmm. you all so much for your mm-hmm. continued patronage, your contributions. You guys make the world go round. More power to you. We love you very much. Um, and if you would like to have your name read out on the show and in the description and get episodes early and have a lot of other fun benefits that we might even display some of later on in the episode, go to patreon.com slash Socratic Cinema or click the link in the YouTube description or in the whatever you're watching. But patreon.com slash Socratic Cinema to support. Thank you. Now wow. back to the show. Incredible. and. That was the great. Whole, the whole point of Patreon, Patreon, is that you got to try and beat the amount of Heatherly family members that have currently subscribed to the Patreon. Right now, that's zero. So if you just go ahead and do it yourself, then you you've already beaten a member of the podcast. So yeah. think about that. A little bit of pride. Uh, it's only a dollar. It's only, only a dollar. dollar. Only a dollar. Only a dollar. And that goes to buying things like the movie Scream. We watched it on YouTube. We rented it. We did. Uh, yeah, we did. That, I got very was, lucky. That was four patrons right there. That was four <laughs> patrons, and it was about to expire when I was watching it. Oh, so, no. Oh, I am Wait, when glad did you watch I caught it. I actually don't answer. This morning. Okay, now that's not as bad as I was. No, no, I watched no, no, no. it yesterday morning, so. Ah, uh, very smart. I tried to watch the first 30 minutes with some friends, which is how you should watch this movie, by the way. Scream is yes. a phenomenal movie to watch with people. Same with every mm-hmm. horror movie. It's best experience with a fun, loving group that uh, you want to scare the absolute crap out of. So, yeah, but I would like to hear some overall takes about Scream. 
uh, it's going to get a little complicated here. We're going to have to talk about some other movies as well because Scream is technically a uh, sort of riff on other slasher movies while it is itself a very good slasher movie. So uh, let's start with uh, let's start with Casey. What were your thoughts on Scream? <laughs> I, I just want to say, spoilers. I'm sorry, Casey. I, I'm Casey, I'm so sorry. Yep, yep. Continue. Spoilers, spoilers for Scream. Spoilers for... Uh, what? Probably like Friday the Thirteenth, Halloween, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, mo- just like mo- classic horror. I of which I've seen none of them. So you know, <laughs> we're in this together. So don't worry too much about spoilers. <laughs> spoilers for Scream, basically. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> so my take. Oh my goodness! I love this movie, guys. Listen, I've been just going crazy since I've gotten my movie suggestion privileges back. And <laughs> mm. I... <laughs> wait, James, shush. Anywho. <laughs> I don't have them yet. <laughs> you guys don't listen to me. <laughs> Whose idea was Scream? Mine. Uh, no, was it mine? No, I thought it was mine. Oh, no, it was yours because you, know, you I... remembered that a new Scream movie was coming out. I'm sorry. I yeah. nearly gasped with oh, you there. Yeah, yeah. I... <laughs> yeah. You see what I, you see what I have hey, to deal with. Gaslight gatekeep girl boss. That's what I said. <laughs> Dang. Oh, my goodness. But speaking of that, let's talk about Sydney, our final girl. Yep. Amazing. Beautiful. I really, really enjoy just the entire setup of Scream. Like, it's just so ingenious like high school party like people have been dying but like they make it into this like game (laughs) and it's like dang dude like it's just like completely not something that you would think would happen like it like it's very like satirical you know which Mm. makes it great because it's like you're experience like there's this kind of self-awareness of the characters but they're also not aware enough that they still yeah. end up getting got. Mm-hmm. And it's just so good. Like, I just love, I, I love the movie. I, it's an 8.5, especially if you're watching it with friends. It's an 8.5. Wow. Who's next, I think Charlie? that's my first 8.5 of the season, guys. Mm, we need to do, like, bingo. Season 5 bingo. Season 5 <laughs> exactly. bingo. But, uh, well, James, I mean, I'll let you go first. I Yes. Okay. All right. All right. As you know, I don't like horror, as you know. Um, but also, I don't... Is this horror? Is this what you call horror? Yes. This is... A, well, it's a slasher movie, so it's a subset of horror. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cause, cause maybe I think... I think I don't have a problem with horror. I just have a... Don't, I just have a problem with, like, a specific kind of horror that I can't really deal with. Because, um, mm-hmm. like, I was tot- like 100% fine watching Scream. Like, I, I, I was not quivering in my boots, you know? Um, that being said, I really enjoyed Scream. I thought it was really funny and smart and clever and other synonyms for that word. Uh, it, it was r- really an enjoyable watch. I thought the killer, pause for emphasis, <laughs> was, uh, really, <laughs> was, uh, really just, uh, he had a great screen presence, uh, very charismatic. The final girl, Sydney. Beautiful. Love it. I think there's a lot of cool, fun stuff to talk about with this one. And I'm glad I watched this absolute classic. Um, Wow. I I think I'd give her a... Hmm. uh, You know, I'd probably give it, yeah, like an 8.5 or around Halloween time, maybe like uh, 8.5. I'm gonna that was that. the most complicated 8.5 I've ever heard of <laughs> in my entire <laughs> life. The I default know. score of this show. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> I entirely agree with you. I thought that the killer has amazing screen presence, and it's not really the killer. It's the killers. Yeah, Because we is. have mm-hmm. the boyfriend and Matthew Lillard. Uh, Matthew oh Lillard God. is... Skeet Ulrich. So we'll talk good, about it. So good in this movie. Uh, mm-hmm. Fun fact, I was going as Shaggy for Halloween this year, and I was inspired by Matthew Lillard's Shaggy, so I grew out a fun little chin strap beard uh, that ended up not working out very well because I didn't actually end up dressing up as Shaggy, so now I just have a no. weird chin strap beard. Well, well, No Shave November <laughs> starts tomorrow, so you... And true. So, I, I guess five days ago, depending yeah. on... Well, no, you gotta start fresh. 
But besides the fact, Scream is a wonderful movie and it's very, very hard for me to critique it because like Casey was saying, it's so self-aware that even the goofier parts of the movie that don't really work for me are sort of doing exactly what they're intended to, like to call mm -hmm. attention to how goofy these kinds of movies are. So I can't really find fault with it. But at the mm. same time, I can't call it the best slasher in the genre purely because of how self-referential it is and how much it draws on the works of other horror films to be as good as it is. Yeah. So I'm in a <clears throat> weird spot here when I'm trying to give it ratings because I really do appreciate how much love is put into this movie from the perspective of a horror fan. Like, it feels very Quentin Tarantino-esque in the way that oh. it, you can almost feel Wes Craven is, like, just a fanboy of his own genre. Good And take. he knows everything about it, <laughs> so he's putting that energy and love into the film. So I, I think if I had to score this on a 10-point scale, I'd give it, like, a 9. And mm. I would... Oh. I'd hold away from a 10 only because I think that you need to watch stuff like Halloween, like Nightmare on Elm Street, like Friday the 13th, in order to fully get how great the yeah. film is. Or at least have, like, an understanding of it. Like, I haven't seen yes. the movies, but I understand them. Like, I've seen, you know, the important clips. I know, like, pop cultural, they're kind of ubiquitous at this point. Um, but I think that's a good point, that a movie like this that sort of critiques and draws so much on a big genre sort of requires that you be familiar with that genre. Um, like, I don't know how good of a first horror movie Scream would be. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I would sooner show people, if we're going for, like, scary horror movies, or I guess, like, no, not even scary horror movies, like slasher flicks, because slashers are not meant to be scary. They're mostly, like, suspense, and there's a lot of energy and excitement in them, and they're gory yeah. and mm -hmm. fun. I will so, say, I, I wasn't scared, but this movie no. definitely elicited reactions. Like, when yes. people would die, I was definitely, like, going, like, ooh, oh, like, sticking my arms out and going, like, yes. Mm. <laughs> no, uh, oh, my gosh. The first sequence in this movie, by the way, we need to talk about it because it's, like, uh, the Charlie, best Charlie, opener. Charlie. The police what? are coming for you. Dude, can you hear them? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, this is how I know that I'm still alive and living at USC is because I'll hear a helicopter go by or, like, the police sirens come out. Uh, they haven't caught me yet. Yeah. So, Jeez. okay, I, I, I think they're dying down. But we have to talk about this opening scene. Uh, because number one, I only remembered it because James was like, oh yeah, I had like reactions to the movie and stuff. That's my best James impression. Uh, was, I had, I'm flattered. yeah, no, pretty good. Uh, I had that reaction to when the first girl's boyfriend got killed. Oh mm. my God. Yeah. Oh my Yucky. God. So brutal. And Very. that's like the first five minutes of the movie. You forget how soon that scene is. Like I was watching with a group of friends and we had all like seen that scene before and seen Scream before. And we're like, wait, it comes like instantly? Like there's no buildup at all to that? Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought she was going to be the main character. Like str yeah. I was straight up believing that that yeah. like fake out. Right? Genuinely there's so got me. many like pump fakes in this movie. It's every, so great. Yeah, every twist and turn in this movie like got me, got me, you know? Mm -hmm. If you had watched previous horror films, James, then you would know that obviously there's a pump well, fake at the start of every movie. No, 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 no. But, but, but like even the big twist, um, the, you know, the, there are actually two killers thing. As far as I know, that's unique to Scream, no? Um, the two killers thing is unique to Scream, but the, yeah. the like random girl dying at the start. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not? No. no. Like that, it, especially like that's when you open up like, a, a big trend is that you open up on on the boyfriend and the girl and they're like having sex or doing something inappropriate well, and the killer comes in twice, and purifies kind of. them. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it totally does. Like, um, you know, yeah, she no, bones but, the killer. Yeah, but like the two the two killers thing, like big shock. I I did not see that coming uh at all. Right. I I, I was getting it to makes the point so where so much sense. I was getting to the point where I was like, if it's not any of like who is it if not any of these people? Because I was like, we've seen the killer with all of these people. Oh, but but if it's two people, then mm -hmm. then, then, then that's fine. I think it would be fun to rewatch now and sort of keep track of like well, who's being Ghostface right now? You know, mm -hmm. I think that would be a very right. Fun, yeah, rewatchable movie for sure. Yes, definitely. Because even you can break down, like as James was saying, like oh, determine who's Ghostface right now. Like you can between um, Matthew Lillard and Ski. Like I feel like they're very um, 
key like behavioral things because like between two Are killers, there? like you obviously have like well <clears throat> going criminal justice real quick, going <laughs> behavioral analysis. Okay, analyze -y. Okay, so in duos, there's always a dominant and there's always a submissive, right? Oh, so, I can see that in this movie. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can see, you can break down the dominant and submissive also by their behavior and also by their killing. So a submissive might, might not be as brutal as the dominant is. Oh, so, but I guess my question is... I mean, you can see that very clearly when, like, at the very end when it's revealed that, you know, who the pair is and just, like, through their interactions. But my question is, like, going back and watching the movie again from the start, do you think there is that much attention to detail where, like, Ghostface Ooh, asked that's, it, right? Because my question that's was, a like... That's good point. That's a yeah, good my, point. My question was, like, are you saying that or is that, like, something you noticed? Because I wasn't sure. Um, oh no! I was just saying that it's not something. Oh no! That I'm I not trying to. De I'm not trying to debunk you. I just. I just <laughs> oh, you're good. <laughs> I was like, your lies, Casey. Yeah, prove it. Uh, source, please. Uh, source. Sorry, source. No, source. don't mention sources. I am having like I'm in the midst of sourcing things. It's oh PTSD. How Awful. It? Yeah, it's not fun. In text citation, gang. It, oh, look at you. But yeah, in, in, in reference to your question, I don't think you can really see it too much. Yeah. Uh, to me, I would like to think that Matthew Lillard is playing the killer when the killer is just getting like absolutely beat up because that's my favorite part of this movie. <laughs> that's my no, favorite they, version. He gets rocked 24-7. It's ridiculous. But watching it back, you can totally tell who the killers are. Like it is very obviously those two from the start. If you know the movie already, and just even because if you don't though, like, yeah, they're, they're sus regardless. They well, True. all of them are sus. Everybody's sus in that movie, except for and like that's Dewey. That's why it's so interesting. Oh yeah, <laughs> bless oh, Dewey. Dang. Bless Dewey. Dewey. Dewey's definitely the submissive. I'm sorry, Dewey, but it it had to be said. I liked him. He was a fun dang. character. He survived though. Yeah, that's, yeah. Which is I also good. liked Video Store Boy. He was fun too. Everyone you, in this movie was would. entertaining. Okay, listen. Everyone <laughs> in this movie was entertaining. Like I, I thought all the characters were like perfectly stereotypical. You know, it's like mm -hmm. it's like we have all the niches we need. It was very nice. Uh, not a very diverse movie, I must say. No, really. Uh, like it's expected though. It, it, I wasn't okay, expecting okay. anything different. Fair, fair, but like. I did it. I, 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 what am I trying to say? I think the only <laughs> people who spoke were white, is my point. Um, like, <laughs> yes. Like, I don't, there yeah. wasn't even like a side character. There wasn't even a token, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, damn. That, no, yeah, yeah. And even if there was, they'd probably get killed. Yeah, because like, yeah, that's a horror trope, is that? That's the, a horror right, trope. Right. Yeah. Well, actually, okay, so if if Scream's goal was to critique and subvert horror tropes, then maybe that was like a good thing Didn't you should you have know? Been yes. oh yeah you're right <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i mean yeah i mean sure but no i was saying like you know maybe that's good that that's the one trope that they avoided is is you know is yes. killing that but still uh it's a double-edged sword right how yeah what representation yeah. is good representation you know well they should have just had more diversity in it obviously but i'm very glad they didn't in include like the token black character that gets killed because that would date this movie hard and one of the best parts about scream is that you can watch it at any time and still enjoy it it has like a timeless quality to it so mm. i don't know I, I feel like when you comment on race in terms of a joke that usually gets old very quickly now the same does not hold true to me for things that uh, jordan peele has made just because that's not like using race as a joke that's using it as a commentary and like actually examining a real social issue. I'm sure Casey could talk more about that because she's the only person here who's actually seen one of his films. We're so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> did, did I apologize? It's fine. It's not like I've been trying for months. I Look, I'm the one who always wants to do it. Look at James. It's, it's this man Why? right what? here. What? Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking about? I feel like finger th and feel disapproving like black. Ray Fisher, get out here. It's, it's <laughs> hey, time for the trial. <laughs> hey, now, I'm Casey. Sorry, I'm hey, joking. now, Casey. I'm joking. I can never disapprove of you, James. It's not my white fragility. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, poor James. We're sorry. We James. love podcasts. We, we love, love. <laughs> uh, universities that we're affiliated with. Please do not. <laughs> please do not watch. But yeah, so <laughs> I, I wanted to. Uh, I don't know how well versed you guys are in the Scream universe. What? But none. Zero. There none. is. There's many a Scream, and there's, there's a television show as well. Yes. There's a lot of Scream. And I recently watched the trailer for the Scream reboot. Sequel thing? Is it, I'm I, not going to lie. I have to see really? the trailer now. I, I thought it, I, I was excited mm-hmm. for it. I don't okay, know. Okay, James, you watch while Casey and I talk about this. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I'm looking at how many Scream movies there are. We have Scream, Scream 2, Scream 3, Scream 4. There's and then the fifth just scream is coming out in yes. 2022. Mm-hmm. And then and, and then, then, the TV then they show. have the TV show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I was looking for like I was hoping there'd be more just like weird spin-offs like like Scream High or or like Scream High. <laughs> like scream, scream Low. Scream the animated series or <laughs> uh oh, Scream Symbiote <laughs> popped up in the from the Venom uh property. So, oh, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, no. The we're Halloween not going back. special. No. Nope. <laughs> okay. Please, I about- will research the Scream Cinematic Universe while you talk about the trailer. I'm gonna yes. I'm gonna definitely watch the trailer. Yes, watch the trailer. But yes. you, Casey, you said you liked it. I did not. I, you did not? Okay. Maybe it's because I'm just so excited that it's coming back. <laughs> because I haven't had Scream content since the ending of the Scream like. TV show, which I didn't really watch like religiously, but mm-hmm. it was like a decent like show. But they were throwing all sorts of like tricks, like type, like wood chip, like putting people through the wood chipper. And what? I was like, oh, damn. Yeah, it was like very, very intense. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> this is like <laughs> a drastic change from the scream that I'm usually like, you know, the one that you've you've watched and you've seen like out of the series. Not saying that the series wasn't like brutal as well, but it's different than putting people through a whole wood chipper. <laughs> yes. Entirely now, agree. I don't know. I found it like I think I just I was just like so excited to mm-hmm. see it, you know? I see I come at it from a very different perspective in that I haven't seen anything but the first scream twice now. And Oh, I see. Yeah. So to me, I don't understand how this franchise is a franchise cuz to me it feels like a lot of the charm of the scream movie is that it's its own isolated thing. Like yes. it doesn't end in a way where there's really going to be like a sequel. It's pretty all shut down and closed and i also think it's hard to be something of a commentary on other slasher movies for that long of a period of time like over multiple movies that's so, fair that is a fair yeah, point like that's what i'm worried about is is the new scream movie that's coming out really going to be scream or is it just a movie that has some of the characters from the first one i feel like it's getting like the halloween kills type mm-hmm. Like, where it's like, we got the the OG girl, but the OG final girl, and um, there's like, oh, listen, it's happening again. We (laughs) need to come back. Like, you thought it it was over. It's it's not over. And I don't Mm -hmm. know. I think, like, the the technology aspects of it, too, because it's like, now, Ghostface is going to be more, like, hacking you know because even in the first like opening scene it's like oh he's going through this like ring type system like click 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 i'm in your house you know (laughs) like and i'm just more like i feel like i'm gonna be excited for that like seeing it be more like Mm -hmm. intellectual and then i also i think the parallels in the trailer also made me excited because i'm like oh i remember seeing this i don't think the cast will be like Super, uh, like I know it's Sydney's there. Yeah, like knock, the knock. original. Knock, knock. Yeah, yeah, hello? Yes. Hello. Yeah, hello. hello? I, I just watched the Scream trailer. I'm back. <laughs> thanks, oh, hello. For, thanks for letting us know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 it looks really serious. Mm. It, looks, it looks really dark. Yes. It's not funny. I'm dark. I, I can see. 
I am sad. I want I want to, to be funny. <laughs> I want the jokes. <laughs> I want the jokes. Okay. The jokes. I recognized Sydney because she'd said about six times, I'm Sydney Prescott. I'm Sydney Prescott. And yes. then I also saw Dewey. Uh, Gail Weathers was in it. Was that Gail Weathers? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, cool. The dude from uh, The Wallows and also 13 Reasons Why, isn't it? Dylan Minnette. Dylan Minnette. Put um, some respect on I, his name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I haven't <laughs> interacted with, I haven't engaged with either of those texts. Um, <laughs> I wow. also, I also um, was thinking in that first half of the trailer, that's like the whole, you know, house phone call, classic scream thing. Um, this is so good now in the modern era where we have Google Home and stuff that's like that. That's what I where, was saying. Where, where, where homes are, you know, like, as it was sort of a scary reminder that like, wow, the internet controls everything in every part of our lives. But it was also like, oh, that's cool. Scream can do the whole house now. <laughs> that's that's cool. I like that. You know, huh. that's neat. I, I felt entirely opposite on that specific point. Like, oh. to me, I think it's really weird that they're doing the Google Home stuff. I get why they're doing it. Like, I understand the reason and, and the, you know, social context and everything. Yeah. But I just feel like there's, it's so much more scary to have to manually lock everything. Like to that's have to go to true. every window and see if it's checked or not. That that's a lot more terrifying of realization uh, yeah. than like, oh, my app is malfunctioning. Let me click harder. Like that's actually that's a good point. But I will say <laughs> this trailer was scarier than the movie was. That's wow. my take. That's a no. Oh, Jeez. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think the movie was scary. I don't every know. horror no, movie fair. fan that's will converge to the comments and burn you at the stake. Yeah. Uh, what is Scream like considered scary? No, but come on, saying the re the trailer scarier than the first well, movie. It, it I was think more like the, the concept of Scream is the scary part of it. It's like I, the yeah. they they live among us and they can the stalkers. Bro, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, please stop. All right. All right. This is my resignation. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. But I have a question. Um, yes. So like, why? What am I trying to say? No, I don't have a question, actually. I think this trailer was scary because it did actual more like horror -y stuff. Like it had the scary strings that were really high and building tension and like dun, 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 when he came out and like started killing her and stuff. Okay. Yeah. And the first movie just to me like kind of didn't like I, mm -hmm. I I was I felt more excitement in the in the original watching you know all the him chasing people around the house and they're like beating him up and but he's still scary or not scary you know it's still like intense uh this to me felt more like I think an interesting part of the original scream is that the heroes never felt powerless at all like they Sydney was like constantly putting up a fight. It was evenly matched. Yeah. Um, whereas <laughs> she was this, on that, bro. It, it felt like they like it just felt like Ghostface was just dancing on them in this trailer. You know, like it was there. It was not. You did, I didn't get that same sense of like he's that's fallible, true. You know, but yeah. again, this was a two minute trailer. I, I, I you know, I can't bro. say much about it. You know what's interesting about that? Because on the opposite end, I've I haven't seen Halloween Kills, but spoilers for Halloween Kills. But well, essentially <laughs> okay. for Halloween Kills, like you know, obviously Michael Myers, right? But I, I know of him. Yes, know of him, and I feel like th with okay, sorry, sorry, I'm I'm buffering a little bit. Yeah, but we have yes. we have Freddy, we have Michael, we have Jason, right? All of those killers have some sort of like superhuman strength they be getting stabbed and beat on but they don't stop right so mm. they're more like supernatural in um in weakness you know like it's mm. like it don't matter you can stab i was also watching halloween with my um like friend group and like this like michael will fully get stabbed in the throat with a knitting needle by jamie lee curtis takes that sh sorry takes that stuff out i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm so sorry takes it out and keeps chasing this girl around the house right and so it's like seeing watching scream and seeing these um like teenagers actually go and start whooping some butt on this killer which makes sense because it's just they're just other teenagers like there's yeah. no like supernatural um thing about it but going back to the like screw this 
Green 5 trailer where now Mike, no, dang it, now Ghostface has become more like those OG like killers. Like he, mm -hmm. as you were saying, like he's what he's doling it out. Like he's we don't see, now. we see he's scary. Mm -hmm. But in Halloween Kills, there's a scene where the entire town jumps yes. Michael Myers, beats him. <laughs> like, and it's like that's so interesting Did they take to me. Off his that, mask yet? Yes. Yes, Multiple they times. have. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it, is he ugly? Uh, they haven't really shown it on screen. Like, I have seen Halloween Kills. And mm -hmm. bad movie, do not watch. The previous one, the Halloween reboot that came out, Spo awesome movie. Uh, do watch. Oh, I haven't wait. spoiled it. I haven't no, said I was going to say, Casey already said spoilers for Halloween Kills. Yeah. We're fine. Yeah, for the, for the Halloween reboot, watch it. It's great. Uh, spoilers for the Halloween reboot, in case I accidentally say some. Uh, the reason why that, I think, is such a great reboot of a classic horror franchise is because... Number one, it takes a really interesting angle on the relationship between the final girl and the killer. So in this case, uh, Laurie Strode is like old now, right? And mm -hmm. obviously because Michael's like an immortal god or something, I think he has like immortality is granted to him by druid magic or something stupid. What? Uh, yeah, okay. that's like a part of the lore. I don't know what? which timeline. Yeah, There's multiple we... timelines. You got to get yeah. it straight. But like he is immortality. And it's basically like this old grizzled woman trying to kill this guy that she has been contending with for like 30, 40 years yes. at this point. Mm. It's so funny. And it's exactly why I love uh, what they did with Luke so much. I just like young heroes now very old, like just grizzled and angry. I don't know. My own personal thing. Mm -hmm. But No, that that's one, good. That's good. Yeah. And, and that's like a new dimension, I think, to the relationship. Because now instead of like the final girl being someone that's like inexperienced and an underdog. Lori Strode is armed to the teeth. It is nah. crazy. She, she has had one bad experience. Yes. No, <laughs> it's like... Never like went the, back. The reboot has like her taking shots at a target range that she made. Like it's, it's awesome. But mm. that's why I'm worried about the new Scream movie is I think that it's exploring the relationship between... Uh, the final girl's name, who, whose name I'm forgetting right now. Sydney. Sydney. Sydney and Ghostface in a really weird way because it's not the original Ghostface, obviously. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't Ghostface like a rotate? It's like more of a persona. It's like yeah. different people, right? Yeah, it's like so, a joke. That's, it's just well, like copycat killers. So well, I'm not like exactly. But. Well, because I'm saying like the original, they made a whole point in the trailer about how like the killer has always has a connection to the, you know, the victims, right? But I was like, this ghost face, unless they do something weird, like the original ghost face are dead. There's no connection to Sydney. Like, yeah, this feels and, and, a little, I don't know. She I'd has, be like, interested to see what they do. Cause I, I can throw in the like, oh, so and so, well, that was my uncle. <laughs> or that was my like, <laughs> you know, strange brother. Well, I know that would suck, but I'm just, Ghost, you know. Ghostface has to have a connection now to the new cast and the old cast by the movie's own rules. So it's like, mm -hmm. you better get mad creative with this one, dog. <laughs> you need to come up with two people, too. <laughs> no, this. I really hope that the new reveal is just always there's one more person. Yeah, I was and gonna now say, we're at Scream 5. It's like eight people or Ghostface. Or it should have been, yeah, it, it's, what's the formula? Like, the number of killers is the Scream movie plus one, right? So in the first one, there's <laughs> two. And then it should have been three. And then it should have been mm -hmm. four. So now there'd be what, six? Six, six, six ghost faces. That's imagine not a whole basketball team. Of Dude, imagine all six pop out at once. That'd be crazy. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, Wait, that would be oh. so funny, guys. Yeah, uh, I don't mean to interrupt things too much, but an evil clone version of myself just stepped out of the oh. mirror I'm looking at. Candyman. And he came I, up I to told me. you not to say that name. No, he, looks, he looks like me, but he parts his hair in the other direction. And <gasps> he also wears a lot of like purple and orange. I think it's like Halloween, James. Um, oh, I see. He, he handed me a devilish note that seems to have come from some sort of Halloween town. And inside of it is a message that says, uh, Hags. Okay. Well, that was. <laughs> That's kind of rude. Um, yeah. But untimely. <laughs> underneath that was a patron question. Ooh. 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 And in case you haven't picked up yet, it's time for our patron Q&A segment, which is the segment. <laughs> <laughs> I always love it. <laughs> no. 
I'll, I'll just <laughs> let you guys carry it. You, you you seem like you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the segment where patrons ask questions and and Socratic gives answers. Um, this week month we only have i'm sorry this i'm I'm not doing a good job this month this month we only have one question um (laughs) but in case you don't know how the show works patrons uh will ask us questions and it could be anything they want from what's how how are we doing today to what's your favorite kind of soup and we'll give our answer on air and talk a little bit about it um and yeah that's pretty much the only rules it's a pretty straightforward segment not a whole lot going on uh to this month we have one question coming from one samuel copeland esquire who writes hey gang i'm wrapping up some midterm exams and could use a little de-stress do you guys have any specific pieces of media that you have as comfort food um and my answer is no because uh you can't eat media bad question moving on (laughs) i think what he meant is do we have any comfort media buddy which, wow. <laughs> this man wow. Oh, on a monthly my basis. goodness. I'm just James just only scary roasted by James. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Um, does anyone have like an off the bat answer that comes directly to their head? Because I yes. have. Okay, go for it. I do. The Princess Bride. Such a good uh, answer. Right? Such a good answer. It, it's the best answer because the whole point is that the movie is framed as being this kid's like comfort like, uh, story. Smart. Right? Because he's sick, he's in bed, oh. uh, and you get this lovely tale of heroism and love triumphing over all, and friendship being the way forward, and it's just like so classically happy that you can't help but enjoy yourself when you're watching it, and it never gets old. It's so timeless; it will forever be timeless. True, so, so true, bestie. Watch the yeah. Princess Bride when you're sick and your grandfather happens to be in town and wants to tell you about his weird mysterious uh european medieval heritage yeah do that (laughs) and only then never at any other point i'd have to agree uh casey Casey, you got any comfort all right i got a couple i got a couple they're throwbacks so shout out my parents but i'm gonna have to go to uh go with 10 things i hate about you and empire records Ooh, empire records that's a, a a movie i haven't heard of that one It is. Well, I've talked about it a couple of times. I've heard of this one before. (laughs) And then we looked up the rating, and then we collectively forgot that I liked that movie. But it's super cool. (laughs) Empire Records, it's based around. Oh, you darn it, Uh, James. 31% Um, on Rotten Tomatoes, Casey. It's enjoyable. What is this? Is that Megan Fox? It is not Megan Fox. No, it's um. I'm sorry, I'm kind of stupid. <laughs> uh, dang it! Let me see. Let me. Yes. No, no, no. Megan Fox in 1995. Talk, no, Casey, this is your part of the show. You talk. I'll read. Don't worry. Okay, but essentially, Empire Records centers on this group of teens that work at an independent record store, but that independent record store is getting like. It's trying to fight being franchised, right? Mm. So one of the people, and they're all kind of like quirky, uh, like teens, obviously. Um, And then one of the teens who's supposed to be closing up, he takes some of the money and he's like, you know, uh, the money that he's supposed to put in the shade, the the safe. He's like, oh man, I can go to um, Vegas and I can make back all this money and we don't have to be franchised. But oh. he ends up losing all that money. Oh, no. So, oh, my goodness. It's just like a really good movie. So this then- entire movie, it's also like Rex Manning Day, which is a huge, like, um, like event that they have where this kind of washed up singer named Rex Manning comes and he signs stuff and he's like fighting with being washed up and then there's these two girls that they're best friends but one of them's like the pretty successful one and the other one's like you know pretty and successful but also (laughs) does is a little promiscuous right and the pretty and successful one like also has a addiction to like speed because yeah it's it's very interesting and so hijinks ensue i take it yeah hijinks ensue it's fun it's fun it's a good it's a good watch I, this sounds like a whole lot going on in one movie. My yes. answer was Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives uh, with Guy Fieri. <laughs> um, yes. Whoa, that's a take. Yeah, I just I grew up watching Food Network, and 
they allot 90% of their airtime to Triple D for some reason. Um, <laughs> Heck yeah. So I watched a lot of Diner Shrivens and Dies growing up. I really like the show. I don't know. It's just a nice... I just like learning about these like homey restaurants. And sometimes if I'm ever like in the area and I see that a restaurant has been featured on Triple D, I'll absolutely go there because I trust Guy Fieri. Um, but if I had to pick a movie, it would be The Muppet Christmas Carol. <laughs> no, I will not be taking questions. <laughs> I love that. Muppet Christmas Carol. You've said that multiple times. Because it's actually so phenomenal. Mm. Um, hello, oh, Christmas, oh, my Christmas, goodness. Hello, Christmas special. Hello, Christmas special. No, 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 no. Oh. We're going to do... I'll announce it right now so that we have to do it. We got to do something similar to presentation night again this year. Yes. I don't know if it's Hallmark oh, movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's, you know, specifically that, but we're doing another presentation night at some point this year, maybe during Christmas, maybe not. You see how I immediately walked back most of the yeah, promise well, that I made? Yeah, because this year there's not, there's there's two months left. So it's either Christmas or Thanksgiving. Well, Charlie and I were already conceptualizing some stuff. This, this is what? true. Yeah. What? When? What? Yeah, when you yeah. were late. Okay. Ooh, okay. Okay. This is getting into this is we're <laughs> spilling off the air right now. Okay. Hold on. Let's keep the listen. Show topics stay on the show. After show topics stay after the show. All right, <laughs> guys. He was okay. seven minutes late today. Do you know how many times I have been a minute late to recordings and he yells at me and he's I, like, "Charlie, you're so unprofessional." I, oh my god. Listen, this is the nineteenth time. We'll kick I, you off the podcast. I, I was out negotiating sponsor deals. Okay. I was oh. hustling. I was pushing us to a million subscribers while you weren't looking. All right. I was working. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was making, I was putting food on the table. All right. Okay. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, but not on your train card, right? Okay, dude. Ooh. Okay, dude. Okay, dude. Okay, buddy. <laughs> listen, listen. Samuel, thanks for the question. Pal, if you would like your question featured on the air, um, let me give you that link one more time. That's P A T R E O n dot c o m slash i'm not spelling out socratic cinema go to patreon.com slash socratic cinema to support the show and have a question read on the air and answered in such similar fashion as just seen on the last episode of patron q a thank you back to the show back to you charlie back to you charlie yeah back to me i'm here give what? us a take give okay us a take. here's my take Wes Craven directed this movie, correct? I'll take yes. your word for it. All right, great. Wes Craven also directed Nightmare on Elm Street, correct? Wait, he did? I'll let him know. Yes. Wait, so this guy's just like is making fun of his own movies? Yes. No, that's what I was going to say. Literally, this... So I didn't know that he directed Scream until I did like a little bit of research. And I'm shocked that I didn't because I really like Wes Craven. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Like, halfway through the movie, before I knew that he directed it, I was like, this is a lot like Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, I am halfway convinced that the the school scenes are using the same school as Nightmare oh, on Elm Street. I like some that. Honestly, shots, fair. Yeah, they're nearly identical, some of the shots, which is really wild, and it felt like this strange hmm. sense of nostalgia and, like, familiarity, but I was like, wait, this is a horror movie. How How is that possible? That It's supposed to be scary. Hmm. Uh, but... I, I think it's really interesting that Wes Craven decided to sort of parody himself and include so much John Carpenter stuff who did Halloween. Uh, like John Carpenter's name gets brought up a couple times and they also use the Halloween movie as the one that they're watching as a group. So very intriguing. What do you guys think about this, this sort of strange collaboration between directors or this strange like reference collaboration. It's very similar, I think, to how Justin Roiland and Alex Hirsch do stuff with Gravity Falls and Rick and Morty, where um, they reference each other in their work. Yeah. Uh, is, is it too referential here because they're like buds in real life or, or do you think it, it fits in the no, world? No, I, I think it's cool. I think it's really yeah. cool. I wish more movies would kind of do it. Um like I just think it's really neat. Um, are they like <laughs> friends in real life? I mean, I would hope so. I'll, I'll conduct some research right now. But yeah, because I love that. Like I love when filmmakers are like buddies and and their work pops up in each other's movies. I just think that's a really cool way of being like, oh, like ha, love that for them. Like how <laughs> Helen Bonham Carter and um, Johnny Depp are like always in everything together, stuff like that. Or Saoirse Ronan and Timothy Chalamet. I I just I like. 
little things like that. I think it's it's very fun and cute and sort of reminds us that like they're still humans. So that's Wait, my yes. Tip. I definitely phone. agree. No, like I like the like collaboration, you know, because yeah. I just like I think like if I was ever like some big shot like movie producer or like screenwriter of course and you so were you guys i totally like reference your work and like Aww. i'd be like oh you who like can figure it out you know like little like easter eggs and stuff i think those are really like just interesting because it's fun to be like oh i've seen that somewhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah absolutely. that that would be my take i, I find it interesting and I, okay. I think it's understandable so the research boy has done his research. Uh, crazy. They're not just friends. Apparently, John Carpenter directed him at some point. Like, Wes Craven appears... Actually, this is one of his things. He appears in his movies a whole bunch. Oh. Uh, so, I don't know how John Carpenter directed Wes Craven in anything, but I I think that that's very interesting. That so, they're like, they've, they've, like, worked together before? They've worked together. They're friends outside of that because they're both old, old school horror directors. Mm. Uh, and unfortunately, Wes Craven died uh, at the age of 76 from brain cancer, uh, from a brain tumor. So John Carpenter gave a really sweet uh, farewell to him uh, where he explains their whole, whole relationship. So if you're interested in that, then please go read that. But mm. I'm glad that we would all reference each other's works. I expect some Andy's Donuts uh, references in the future. From, oh, definitely. From both of you. But, uh, yeah, that's just something that I noticed that they, they kept going back to John Carpenter and that also they used, I'm, I would bet money that they used maybe some of the same sets that they did as in Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, street. Oh, here's my big horror take. You guys want to hear my overarching horror take? I don't know if I've delivered this yet on the podcast or not, but I've said it to people. Mm -hmm. Horror is the most feminist genre and has been forever. Let him is know. This, is this because of the Talk last girl? Him. So, sort of. The last girl thing is slightly problematic if we're thinking of like, oh, th like horror movies are very weird in that they deal with the concept of purity a whole lot. Yes. Like that's where yeah. the last girl comes from is that she's only the last girl because she's a virgin. And like the, the underlying premise is that the killer is killing people who are quote, unpure. Which is not the case in this movie though. Not the case in this movie. Another... Another crazy thing, right? Right. She doesn't go sicko mode and actually, like, you know, kill Scarface until after she does the deed. Yes. Yeah. Well, and also she has, like, an actual character arc moment about it, and there's, like, mm -hmm. a reason that she's a virgin. Uh, yeah. Like, I was she gonna has say, trauma. Yeah, I was going to say this movie right. has a very respectful attitude towards consent and right? respecting decisions. And I was going to say, huh, what a very healthy depiction this is until the guy yes. turned out to be a murderer. Yeah. yeah. Um, Damn. I mean, you know, I feel like problematic king. You know, it's okay. Problematic king. <laughs> Don't even. Everyone has <laughs> their. You know, it's okay. It's all right. Problematic king. You win some, you lose some. <laughs> you win. He murdered people. He yeah. lost he a tried lot in this one. He lost a lot. What's <laughs> in what did he gain? So wait, Charlie, get back to you. I let me not yeah. distract you. So yeah. Horror is the most feminist genre because a lot of times what we're seeing today is people get really, really mad at movies when they're like, we're going to re relaunch this movie with an all-female cast, right? Now, Ghostbusters. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Case in point. Some of this criticism is warranted because it is sort of forced representation and you're trying to make up for a systemic lack of representation by doing a really poor sequel uh, that's like hashtag girl power, essentially. Yeah, uh, which is it, which I would argue many women do not actually feel is a lot of times hashtag girl power, right? <laughs> you want more natural characters. And horror has been doing this forever. Think Ripley. Think yeah. the girl from Nightmare on mm -hmm. Elm Street. Think Laurie Strode. Think the girl from this movie. Like classic horror has females in really badass like leader character positions all the time. And yes, mm -hmm. you do have this undercurrent of like, yeah, oh, like this whole weird virgin purity thing. But I, I would argue that that is secondary to how cool and, and progressive the portrayals of a lot of these characters were and how much I think that did for, I mean, women growing up during that time to see that, you know, they could fight back against su supernatural killer Michael Myers 
who has not died and it has been like seven movies or something. <laughs> or they can fight back against Frog and Toad in ghost face masks and scream. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> How did you sneak Frog and Toad in here? <laughs> was I, not gay icons? I like to refer to any duo of people as weird names. Like <laughs> Frog Mario and, and Luigi. Toad. Oh, God. We're getting oh, self-referential because this harkens back to the Pacific Rim podcast. Yeah, I, was, I, 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 I couldn't pull it up in time, but my favorite is uh, coleslaw and potato salad. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't do that as one of the bags. Oh, I'm so uh, mad. Okay, oh, got to do Pacific Rib 2 now so that we can oh, do that. Uprising, baby. Uprising. But yeah, do you guys agree with my take? Am I, am I right, wrong? Yeah, yeah. I, I think completely concur. Gang Ripley. I love Ripley. I love Ripley. I love well, Ripley, and I'm so sad that Alien Isolation is not that great of a game. That's the hottest take I'll ever drop, by the way. <laughs> oh, I played like five minutes of it, so I'm not, I'm not offended. I'm not scalded. Um, last thing I want to say before we have to go is that that kill in the garage door with yeah. the dog oh. thing. I've been oh. wanting to talk about Ooh. it for a hot minute. <laughs> but like, I don't know what else to say aside from, ugh. Like, what a, <laughs> what no, a tough way to go. Also, some gruesome kills. I'd say that would be in my top three. I think the that's the, the worst in the movie for like a, by a good margin because it's so like, it's one of the most like elaborate and also kind of drawn out. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But also just like, dang. She kind of dumb for trying to make it through the dog door. I ain't even no, gonna lie. She's smart. Where else would you have gone? That's genius to think well, dog door. Okay, it's smart, but also like there was realistically no way she was getting through that. Like, <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Are you she was not are you that much? She was not James? that much of a skinny legend. <laughs> wow, James. That's not what I mean um, by that. You know, that's not what I mean by that. No, but. no, I no, get what I, you're saying. She. She definitely had, how to put it nicely, some assets that, that would have stopped her. It was from a Chihuahua dog door, also. Yes, very oh, slight yes. dog door. <laughs> and I feel like also that's also that's definitely a thing in like classic horror movies. I feel like just watching the OG Halloween, there is a lot of gratuitous nudity and getting killed. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it that that did feel almost that a little a bit theme. like. I feel like that kill was sort of strange in that it was almost like. Just the positioning of everything yeah, felt a little yeah. uncomfortable. I was it like, was, mm -hmm. I was no, like, there's this, tons of fan service. In, I well, I guess you can say. call it fan service. That's really weird. I don't like no, that. No, it I, was fan uh, service y. It was like a little upskirty. I don't, yeah. 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 I, don't, I was not a fan of that aspect of it, but I was Because honestly, there's a, yeah. actually, that brings me to this, in, this scene in Halloween where, um, oh, dang it. But she, Lindsay, the babysitter, so essentially Michael has, like, locked her in the laundry room to the point where yes. she has to go through the window, and she gets stuck, and you think she's going to get killed, but then the girl that she's babysitting comes out. Sorry, the girl the, that she ba babysits name's Lindsay. I'm forgetting the babysitter's yeah, yeah. name right now. Not important. But she comes in, total panty shot. And uh, she's like, don't whoa. talk, don't, da 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 And I mean, of course, it's like, there's just gratuitous nudity, which is, which is yeah. interesting going back to the, like, purity um, point. Yeah, but I don't, they want yeah. it both ways, you know? They, they you do can't want have it both your ways. cake and eat it, too. Um, yeah, like, full also, frontal or nothing. That's what I say. Like, go no. one direction. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Also, I mean, also Alien is guilty of that, too. Like, as great of a character as Ripley is, that there's that whole, like, last 20 minutes of that movie is just, you know. Is it? Nip. Really? I, I think so. What's that sound? I'm sorry, girl, but I am staring at your head. <laughs> I'm cutting okay. us off. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. For for Alien, isn't the whole point that all of them are like in their underwear in that one scene though? Like it's just she's the only one alive at that point. I mean, yeah, but so they all were of all, them is just her. I I suppose, but I don't know. That that feels way less bad to me than uh, stuff in this movie. Oh, I but, guess. I don't know. I just like my experience watching Alien was like, oh, was like, okay, right. yeah. I was like, why is she okay? We're in the last 20 minutes. Like, I guess she's where are your pants? Yeah, I was like, no. why, I guess you're fighting the alien in your underwear now. Like, all right. Th the reason why they did that is because a huge theme of I've talked about this before of Alien is that it's like sexual horror yeah, a little bit. I know. The alien's phallic. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I, phallic and, uh. it's like, th this I, is not me putting it into this, by the way. That's like how Alien works. I know. I get mm -hmm. it. I still don't care. I still think that's weird. I'm sorry. Well, you hate Alien then.
No, I love. I, listen, listen. I like Alien. I just think as long as we're talking about objectifying women, you have to. You you can't you can't say like you so can't we'll put that in Socratic <laughs> in my yearbook. That's well, wonderful. But I'm no, saying, that'll be our our my quote. point. My point is, if you're gonna start that conversation, you can't be like, but not this one because that's my fave and that was an artistic choice. Like, nah, bro. No, that you one is my fave, and it is an artistic you choice. You can't and it's have not your cake one. and eat it. You can't have I'm, your cake and I'm eat it. I'm going to. I'm going to. Good night. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> This episode's over. <laughs> no, no, we haven't got to the spiel zone. I want Comment, to go to the spiel okay. zone. Comment, going in the spiel zone. Listen, listen, we're going in. I'm going in in three, two. I have to take a big breath here, all right? Wait, wait, can we do a... <clears throat> Casey, I already took the breath, bro. No. Bring, bring, bring. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi, James. <laughs> Why did I pick up the phone? I hate myself. Hello. How are you doing tonight? I'd like to talk to you for a moment about subscribing to us on social media, if that's oh, all right. Oh, where could I find you? Uh, well, <laughs> you can find us on Twitter at, <laughs> at Cinema Socratic. You can find us on Instagram at Socratic underscore cinema, cinema. You can also find us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Socratic Cinema. Um, oh. What's next? That's so interesting. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a follow. Is there any... <laughs> Other podcasts I could watch. Yes, you can find five whole seasons of them on our Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on iHeartRadio, on YouTube, on Podbean, on basically any platform you can think of. We're probably there. Um, would you like to play a game? If you get this question right, you live. If you don't, you die. We're turning the tables. I I'm the killer now. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think you're Where the person she... to make those demands. Where can you become a patron? Oh, I think uh, it's at patreon.com slash Socratic Cinema. That's right. It is at patreon.com slash Socratic Cinema. Um, did you know that if you are a $1 patron, just $1, you get access to episodes early? And did you know you get a, you get them two days early? Sometimes only one day if our distribu if our manager of distribution forgets Shut to put up. it up. Shut <laughs> up! Shut up! I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. So unnecessary. I get Listen, it up early every you, time. Every time I get came, it up early. You came for me. I'm coming for you. Um, uh, <laughs> did you know that, that? Did you also know that you should subscribe and like and comment and share this episode with two friends? Because I have another question. Do you know what the best form of advertising is? Word of mouth. It's word of mouth. That is, you're so right, Ghost Case. <laughs> Ghost Case. Oh, that was a good one. I think, uh, I think I just won some brownie points. Good night, everybody. Look behind <laughs> you.